My lead off example for law of sines is just uh, solve a triangle. And uh, now this is an acute triangle, which means all the angles are less than 90 degrees. I have 76 and 67 degrees and uh, something else. And then um, this side is known to be 13. I want, first of all, I want to find x. Suppose the assignment was find x. Now, I'm going to solve for also this side and that angle. So, but I, I think it would be interesting to start solving for x because I cannot directly apply the law of sines here. So, remember the law of sines, I have, um, it looks like a over sine alpha equals to b over sine beta. And so if I know, and I put the length on top because I'm, I'm solving for length. In order to fill it out, uh, x would have to be opposite a known angle. And um, at the moment it's not known. And, um, but, but the other thing I want to mention, because I'm going to tie this together with uh, geometry, and uh, I don't know how familiar you are with this designation of triangles. This triangle is, uh, to solve this triangle, it is, um, uh, well, you could call it angle side angle, <laughs> or side angle side. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, I think angle side angle is what, what the unknown is. We want to solve for that. So I'll, I'll elaborate on that if you've never heard that uh, classification of a triangle. When, when I get done with the law of cosines, we're going to run through the different types of triangles we can solve and, and what laws would, would apply. So it'll make sense later on. So let's don't worry about it at the moment. All right. Um, but, you know, I can, I can fix all this if I... I figure out that angle, and that should be easy, right? Because the three angles add up to 180. And so what would that be? Um, let's see. 67 and 76 is 143. And so the other angle must be 37 degrees. 37 degrees. So do those add up to 180 degrees? Boy, I hope so. Looks like it to me. All right, so now I can um, use the law of sines because uh, my unknown is x, at the moment my unknown is x, so I put x over the sine of 37 degrees, and that will equal to, I'll use 13, 13 over the sine of 76 degrees. So I put length on top, sines down the denominator, and x will be multiplied by sine 37, 13 sine 37 degrees, over sine 76 degrees. So let's figure that one out. All right, so 13 sine 37 divided by sine 76. X is about uh, 8.1. I'll just, I'll just estimate it as 8.1. So we got that link there. Well, let's fill it in. And, and I'm almost done with the triangle because uh, if I want to solve for this side, uh, well, I guess I'll call it y. <laughs> okay. Now, if I want to solve for y, I would do something quite similar. Let's go y over sine 67 degrees. Sine 67 degrees equals to, should I use this or 13? Well, if 13 is supposed to be exact, and this is decimal approximation. Let's go with the exact. So I'm going to use uh, 13 divided by sine 76. 13, oh, whoops, divided by sine 76 degrees. There we go. So y would be multiplied by sine 67, 13 sine 67 degrees over sine 76 degrees. And we'll uh, punch that one out. Let's see, 13 sine 67 divided by sine 76 is about 12.3, uh, about 12.3, so uh, round it off. All right, so let's see, we'll put that up there. And does that make sense, 12.3? Well, the largest angle is 76, so 13 should be the longest side. The next largest angle is 67, so that should be the second largest, and this is the smallest, so that should be the shortest, shortest side. Kind of a way of, of, of checking yourself without you know, redoing the problem. So, Okay, well, uh, well, we'll work some interesting examples here, law of science, and then we'll uh, go from there with the law of cosines. 
I thought this would make a, a neat problem. I just made up the numbers. I have no idea what, what the answer is going to be. Maybe it won't be a hill. Maybe it will be a mountain. Oh, we'll see. At the base of a hill, the angle of elevation to the top is 23.5 degrees. Stepping back 500 feet, the angle is now 18.6 degrees. How tall is the hill? Okay, so take a minute, pause the video, draw the picture. See if you can draw the picture correctly. And, and, and try it. And then we'll uh, come back and see me work it. You ready? Okay, so we, we have a hill. And I'll probably uh, draw it like a volcano. <laughs> okay, here's my hill. And this angle of elevation is 20... 3.5 degrees. Okay, and then we move back 500 feet. And now the angle of elevation is 18.6 degrees. Okay. Um, all right, well, then uh, what do we got? Well, really, we're focusing on this triangle here, aren't we? And um, now why am I focusing on that? Well, let's see. We do want the height of the hill, but I don't know how far this is. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What can we do here? But if I figured out this length, would I have enough to calculate the hill? I think so, because um, here's the height of the hill. I, I can't I can't get it directly right now because the 500 feet only applies to this section. I don't know how far that is. Now we could probably figure that out with some uh, juggling around here. But um, let's go after this uh, distance. I'll call it D. And because if I know that, then I can calculate this probably with a sine. Sine of 18.6 degrees would be the height divided by this length. And we figure out that length, we're, we're in business. Now we can also figure out that length. I don't know which one's easier here, or if it makes any difference. But um, if I concentrate on this triangle, I think that's the one to do, because um, here we have two angles, and we can get all three angles here easily enough. For example, this angle is supplement to 23.5, so if I take 180 degrees, Subtract 23.5 degrees, I'll get a, uh, let's see, 156.5 degrees, won't I? Okay. So now I've got my distance I'm solving for divided by the sine of the angle opposite, and my other distance is 500 feet. Ah, I need this angle. I need that angle. Well, that would be, uh, what would that be? <laughs> uh, probably the difference between these two. Let's see, 1.4. Is that 5.9 degrees? I think it's 5.9. But you know what? I want to check that. So if we add these three angles together, well, I get 180. You know, it's a triangle. 18.6 plus 156.5 plus 5.9. Oh, well, I did something wrong. That's 4. Point. Uh, 1.4. Ah, 4.9. Well, I'm glad, we ch glad I checked because uh, my arithmetic was a little bit off there. Let me, let me fix the arithmetic. Yeah. Well, my thinking was good, just my arithmetic was bad. 4.9 degrees. All right, so why did I notice 4.9? Well, um, <laughs> this difference is 4.9. 23.5 minus 18.6, 4.9 degrees. And intuitively, I thought that's probably going to make it. Because if I had 4.9 to 18.6, I get 23.5, and add 156.5, I'm up to 180. I have all 180 degrees. So anyway, however you do it, you just have to get this from this angle, and then uh, just subtract these two from 180, you'll get 4.9. If you want, keep it a little simpler. Okay, so I think we have the ingredients for the law of sines in this, in this uh, triangle. So my unknown distance, let's put it as a numerator, d divided by the sine of its opposite angle, sine 156.5 degrees, equals to, and then the known distance is 500 feet, 500 divided by the sine of its 
opposite angle, sine 4.9 degrees. All right, so distance up to, from out here to the top of the hill would be uh, 500 times, or multiply by sine of 156.5, 500 sine 156.5 degrees divided by sine 4.9 degrees. All right, so I think we'll get something, I'm guessing over 500 feet. Uh, let's see, 500 sine 156.5 and then divide by sine 4.9 and I get, uh, whoa, yes, 2,334 feet. All right, so this is 2,334. 2334. Well, that's not the height of the mountain, but that's the, uh, the distance. Distance. Okay, now we can get height because now I can transfer my attention to this right triangle, and I think it'll be easy because I know this angle and I have the hypotenuse, I need the opposite sign. So I have opposite hypotenuse angle as a sign. Sign. 18.6 degrees equals to H divided by hypotenuse D and um, 2, 3, 3, 4. All right, so I know H is for height, not H for hypotenuse. All right, so the, the height is going to be this product here. Multiply by 2, 3, 3, 4, and we're in business. So the uh, heights of the hill. The hill is, um, let's see, 2,334 times the sine of 18.6 degrees, and that's approximately, let's see, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3, 4, mm -hmm. 2, 3, 3, 4, sine 18.6, 744 feet. Uh, it would be 744.5 feet if we want to, uh, about 744.5 feet. Oh, okay, uh, rounding it to 744, and it would round to 744 on my calculator. Um, maybe if I used all the decimals from before, let's see. Because yeah. if I use all the decimals here, Two three three four point one three three eight eight two eight four times the sine of eighteen point six. It does round to seven hundred forty-five. Okay, in that case it would round to seven hundred forty-five feet. How about we just do that? Because I don't think at that at that height no one's going to care about that half a foot. There you go, seven hundred forty-five feet high. Is that top of that hill? Pretty neat, huh? So uh, you suppose that's how they have measured heights of mountains in the past without, yeah, well, if you climbed up there, how are you going to know the height of the mountain? You know, so, uh, you know, up until, up until the, uh, the, the mo most modern age of global positioning satellites, um, heights of mountains would have been determined this way, I would expect, you know, to use surveying, good surveying instruments. And uh, the, uh, nowadays, like Mount Everest is, uh, I don't know, <laughs> about a foot or two taller than we, they thought it was. Because now they have satellites can just you know bounce radar off it and, and get a more precise reading. But uh, anyway, there we go. So um, a great uh, application of law signs. Oh, let's let's do another one. This problem has an interesting issue that uh, that, that can crop up with um, trying to solve by the law of signs. And uh, my way of uh, introducing it to you is through this another problem, another application. So. Anyway, let's read through it. Make sure you can read my handwriting here. A plane flies two hours at 350 miles per hour, but was off course by six degrees. A turn is made and the plane arrives after one more hour. How much time was lost due to the course error? Okay, so um, pause the video, see if you can draw the picture. The reason I'm asking you to do this is because uh, I think students need more practice at interpreting problems and, and drawing the correct diagrams. So anyway, see what you can do, see if you can solve it, and then uh, come back and watch me. Okay, you're ready? 
All right, so two hours at 350 miles per hour. Well, how far is that? It would be two hours times 350 miles per hour would give you 700 miles. So the plane's going to fly 700 miles. And then it's going to make a, a turn and uh, fly another one hour. One more hour will be 350 miles. 350 miles. And arrives at its destination, which is up here. All right, now the, the course error was six degrees. So six degrees go here, goes here. All right, now. Um, I'm going to talk about this more later after we've gone through the law of cosines, but this is a side-side angle instance. Side-side angle. If you want to be a little more crude, call it the angle side-side. All right, you can figure that out. Side-side um, angle, and uh, it's called the ambiguous case. So I'll, I'll elaborate on that <laughs> a little bit here. Let's see what happens. So I want to uh, calculate what I need to calculate. I want this side. Uh, because if I know this distance, it's going to be a little bit less than 1,050, which is the sum. Was well, a little bit less, and we can determine how much time was lost. You know, it took three hours to make this flight. It should take it just a little bit less time to go directly. All right. So how about we call this uh, d for distance? Now, now where do you go with this? I've got. Um, uh, well, law of sines has uh, two known sides, I mean, it has two sides and two angles. And uh, here I've got a side with this opposite angle. Okay, that's good. And I have distance. I need that opposite angle. I don't know what that opposite angle is. Um, what can I do about that? Let's see here. That'll be something we can do. Uh, all right. Well, I can calculate this angle right here. Okay, if I have this angle, then I have both angles, and being a triangle, I can get the third angle. Now I can get the distance. Okay, because right now, the distance I'm looking for is unknown, and the angle across from it is unknown. Two unknowns, I can't, I can't solve using a lot of signs. But first of all, let's calculate this angle. I'll call it theta. So, uh, sine theta, divided by the opposite side, 700 miles, equals to, and then I'm going to use this angle, because it's known, sine 6 degrees, divided by its opposite side, 350 miles. There we go. So sine theta would be multiplied by 700, 700 sine 6 degrees over 350. And how about we just make it easier for ourselves, because this is 2, right? Sine theta is 2 times sine 6 degrees. Sine theta is 2 sine 6 degrees. Alright, so theta would be the inverse sine of 2 sine 6 degrees. Now let's see what we get. Um, so inverse sine of 2 sine 6 okay, would be 12 point, uh, about 12.1 degrees. Okay, so 12.1 degrees. All right, and that looks about right, doesn't it? Uh, the, the problem with the side side, uh, I'm sorry, side side angle uh, type of triangle is that that could have been a larger angle. <laughs> because this side could have swung over to here and, and the angle might have been much larger might have been much larger, which this calculation would not pick up. So hold that thought, and I'll talk about this when I really focus on what's called the ambiguous case. All right, so it, it might be a little perplexing at the moment, so bear with me on this. But um, there, there are actually two triangles that would, would fit this law of sides. This is the, turned out to be the correct angle. Uh, the correct triangle, and there could have been a different triangle. So it could cause a problem. Uh, it didn't this time. The calculator gave us the correct answer, but in some instances it will. Got all that? Well, if you didn't, don't worry about it. We will talk about this 
in more depth later. I just wanted to kind of get her introduced to you. <laughs> okay. So, but 12.1 degrees looks correct, doesn't it? 12.1 degrees. So if that's 12.1 and this is 6, that's 18.1, this must be uh, 161.9 degrees. Is that right? Hmm. Yeah. 12.1, that's 173.9. 174, yeah, that's right, 161 degrees, 161.9 degrees. My 12.1 degrees is pretty sloppy here. Let me fix that for posterity. 12.1 degrees, there we go. Okay, now, uh, now I can find D, again, by using the law of sines. So let me erase these calculations, and then we'll uh, plug it in and calculate D. I wrote it up, and so my unknown is this distance, but now I have the angle opposite it, so I'm in good shape. So D divided by the sine of its angle equals to, and I'm going to use 350 divided by the sine of 6 degrees. I don't want to use that because I have, um, you know, a lot of decimals. Now, I'm going to use all these decimals, however, because if I, I have this number in my calculator, 12.067091464. Okay, I have all the decimal places. So I'm going to take 180 minus that answer and also subtract 6 degrees. So I, I took 180 minus this number in my calculator minus that. I got 161.932908. Five, three, five. I don't know if all those decimals are going to make that much of a difference, but I like to always like to kind of bring up um, some sense of precision in calculations. You know, when you round off numbers, you make you create an error. If you have to use that um, number rounded off error in a subsequent calculation, the errors can get uh, kind of exaggerated in some circumstances. All right, so D distance is. Multiply here, I got 350 sine 161.9 degrees, but I'm using all my decimals, not just 161.9, divided by sine 6. All right, let's see what happens. So I got uh, 350 times the sine of the answer I have in my calculator, which is 161 point something, and then divide by sine of 6 degrees, and I get... Uh, 1,038.4, 1,038.4, okay, and, and that, that too is rounded off, that's kind of the final answer. So how much time was lost? Well, um, let's see, well, <laughs> um, this trip took two hours, but if I take 1,038.4 miles, and divide by 350 miles per hour. Okay, the miles units will cancel, and when we invert and multiply, we'll get hours. So that's going to end up being hours. I'm going to take uh, my answer in my calculator, divide by 350, and I get uh, 2.9. Um, hmm. Yeah, 2.9669 hours. All right, so 2.9669475. Uh, hours. Okay, this this trip took three hours. Remember, two hours here, one hour there. So if I if I subtract this time from three, so I'll take three minus my answer. I get uh, the error. Okay, um, time lost was um, 0 0.033 hours <laughs> or let's put that in minutes so I'm just going to take that decimal number and multiply it by 60 to get in minutes 1.98 minutes which um, you know, among friends, we just call it two minutes. Oh, okay, they lost two minutes. So what? Uh, all right, two minutes lost. But I thought there was an uh, interesting uh, computation. And, and again, the, the original information of the problem, when, when you 
walk around a, a triangle, you have to go in consecutive order. Side, side, angle. SSA. And that is called the ambiguous case. So file that away. I will ambiguous case. Ah, first I will correct my spelling. It's called the ambiguous case. Big U us case because often there could be uh, well usually there are two different triangles that fit that information and we have to be careful that we because your calculator is only going to give you one answer one angle and there might be a different angle that works so all right file that away we will elaborate and I'll explain a lot more down the road here another law of signs example and and again um, I'll read it pause the video see if you can draw the picture and figure it out. And then come back and watch me do it. All right, and talk about it. Two people standing 100 feet apart, each record an angle of elevation to a balloon of 76 degrees and 72 degrees. How, how high up is the balloon? Can we figure that? Okay, so draw the picture. You got it? Okay, so uh, let's see. They're 100 feet apart, and here are my angles of elevation. Let's see, which one's bigger? Well, this one would be the 76 degrees, right? That'd be 72 degrees, and I want to know how high the balloon is. Okay, so this is 100 feet right here. We need that. Um, well, to do that, I think I first need to figure out one of these two sides. And uh, uh, will that be enough? Yes, because if I have either of these sides, I can then use this right triangle, either this right triangle or the larger right triangle. All I need is um, a hypotenuse, and then I can get the height of the balloon, H, right there. So, okay, did we do something like this uh, earlier? I don't know. Uh, before law of signs, maybe. I mean, this can be solved without the law of signs, but it, I think it takes more work. It takes more work to solve these. So um, let's see what we can come up with. So um, this one is, um, well, we need to focus on one triangle. I can only do this um, obtuse triangle here. So this angle will be 180 minus 76. Does that make sense? That makes this a 104 degree angle. And that makes that angle four degrees, doesn't it? All right, let me make sure I did this correctly. So four plus 104, 104 is 108, plus 72 is 180. Ah, that's good. All right, so um, what side do you want to figure? All right, so we could, uh, uh, I could do this side. How about we do that side? It doesn't matter, either one's gonna work. If I do this side, then when this side is known at that angle, then I can use, uh, probably uh, an inverse sign, uh, I use a sine function to calculate the height. So, all right, so D is, my unknown is opposite 72 degrees, so D over sine 72 degrees equals to, um, here I have a length here, 100 is opposite four degrees, so 100 feet across the uh, sine of four degrees, I mean divided by sine of four degrees, and so, Distance is 100 sine 72 degrees over sine 4 degrees. All right, now, um, that's D. And we know from this triangle that the sine of 76 degrees here, it's a right triangle, that's nice, sine of 76 is H over D, opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so H, Multiply by D here, H is D times sine 76, so it's this calculation times the sine of 76. 100 sine 72 degrees, sine 76 degrees, divided by sine 4 degrees. So, you know, this time I saved all my computations to the very end. Save the calculator work to the very end. That way, your calculator is going to use all the decimals it has. It'll give you the most accurate answer. Not a bad... Uh, uh, have it to get into. All right, so 100 sine 72 times 
sine 76 divided by sine 4 is 13.23. We'll round off the nearest uh, foot, would be 1,323 feet. 13.23. Okay. So uh, the balloon is, I'll squeeze it up here. The balloon, then I want to talk about something else related to this problem. The balloon is about 1,323 feet high. Okay, now, um, a kind of an interesting, interesting idea here is to think about what, what would be, you know, we, we make errors when we measure. Um, you know, if you're using a protractor, just an ordinary protractor, and you're setting best you can, uh, you know, a protractor only has a whole number of degrees on it, so you're not going to get decimals, but if you say, suppose you got within half a degree either way. In other words, for example, it's 72 degrees. 71.5 rounds up to 72 degrees, and that rounds up to, I mean, in 72.5 degrees, rounds down. So in other words, um, if your instrumentation is being used to one, to a whole number in degrees, if you, then you have to round when you're a little bit off, don't you? So you go to the nearest degree, you go to the nearest 72 degrees, that means your you, real answer is somewhere between 71.5 and 72.5. Okay. And, and same here, this will be between 75.5 and 76.5. So we could um, literally factor those errors in here to see what we get. For example, suppose that uh, you know, he undermeasures 71.5, and he over measures 76.5, and I don't know what this will be. This will be, it may have still four degrees. <laughs> um, anyway, it's going to be uh, a, a bit on. Let, let me just try that. Suppose that um, his true answer, his true uh, angle of elevation was 71.5. So 100 sine 71.5 times, I suppose his true uh, estimate was 76.5 times sine. 76.5, and probably those balance out. I'll just divide by sine 4, just to give you some kind of idea. I get uh, 1322. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's a small error, isn't it? So, anyway, um, I, I don't want to get too deep into this idea. We do explore that a little bit in calculus called increments and differentials. And it's a topic about measurement errors. And um, anybody who goes in engineering or physics has to think about measurement errors. So I just wanted to throw that, throw that little thing in here because uh, um, you know, this is a decent estimate. But you know, how precise are you, is your instrumentation? You know, and, um, so, and so these, these potential errors in measurement can be estimated. And um, the, the maximum possible errors. All right, so. Um, hope that didn't, wasn't, didn't come across too confusing, but uh, I just wanted to address that. Main thing is, can you do this problem? Can you get that? Okay, that's what you really had to had to learn out of this. All right, now I think we're going to uh, go on to the law of cosines. We're going to derive the law of cosines and then uh, work out some problems with that.